Matt, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Before we get going, is the film The Forgiveness Project or The Forgiveness Journey? The Forgiveness Journey. The Forgiveness Journey. Yeah, like it's a journey through forgiveness. So, like I usually ask filmmakers, is this something that you, you've, have you been a filmmaker for a long time and um, finally this topic came to you? Or is this something that uh, you just finally graduated from film school and this was your first film? Uh, this, would, this was my third film. I've only been in the film industry making films for about three, three and a half years. Ah. So, and then I was, um, I am from California originally, um, Northern California. I was attending the Academy of Art University in San Francisco online um, and been doing that for the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. So this is fairly new industry for me. But you're fairly prolific. Three films in three years? Um, yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, but after, <laughs> uh, another one coming up next month we're releasing, but after that I'm taking a break. <laughs> oh, I think. <laughs> I think so. So, forgiveness journey. Usually when somebody comes up with the idea of a film, there's some trigger, some spark, some incident that happens and says, you know, I want to I want to explore the idea behind this or I have so much to say about this. This is why I want to make this film. What's your story behind the forgiveness journey? Well, it is very uh, personal uh, film. Um, I'm highlighted in the film. I, at first, I didn't want to put myself in my own film. I felt a little odd about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought maybe the message would uh, help others in a, in a similar situation. Um, I haven't spoken to my daughter. haven't seen her. Actually, I haven't seen her in about eight years due to uh, some illegal activity that I did in 2006. Uh, pretty serious. Spent four years in prison. Uh, because of it, um, and I lost contact with her. Um, so it's definitely a personal journey from, you know, trying to receive forgiveness from her and her mother and forgiving myself for the uh, really stupid and really harmful mistakes that I made um, through some some websites that were deemed illegal. Mm -hmm. um, so... It's a very personal journey, but it's, you know, it's not, it's from our, from our release of our film in February, it seems to be that my story stuck out. And I don't know if it's because I'm the director or if it's the story itself, but I want to, you know, say it's not, it's not my film. It's not about me. It's about a lot of different people and mm -hmm. their journeys. Um, and so, yeah, so it's very personal. And that's well, kind of how it started. The question I have is who did the narration in the film? I'm sorry? Who did the narration in the film? Actually, I did, which was another weird, <laughs> weird thing. I was hoping to hire a voiceover person. We didn't have the finances, but I actually uh, voiced the, the film as well. Well, because the reason why I ask is because you're talking about yourself in the third person. You're not talking about, from your point of view, you're talking about, you were, it's like you were looking at yourself and talking about yourself. Correct. Yeah. That's why I was confused for a while. I was saying, okay, whose point are we looking at and... Who is, who is the narrator? And then I think at the end, I think it did come out that you did the narration. I said, wait, okay, now I'm totally confused what happened here. Yeah, it's a little different in that way. Um, you know, I've done radio in the past, and so I figured I would, I would voice it. Um, and, and again, I, I, I wasn't going to voice it, but because of financial restrictions, I was kind of forced to. Sure. Um, and, and so I did the third person lifestyle. Well, sure. Well, it's some people, for example, who, who come up with, who, who um, decide that they want to come up with a, doc a documentary, they'll spend like one or two years just raising the money for it, and then another yeah. one or two years doing it, and then another year coming up with more money. And then so you decided that you wanted to get it out right away. So however you did to get it out is what you were going to do. Yeah, I mean, it took two years of, of filming. I started this, uh, you know, two years ago, approximately two, two and a half years ago, and a lot of time filming it. Uh, did a lot of interviews, traveled to Portland, Oregon. Uh, I really wanted to travel more, um, but was able to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's about a two-year project. It was released officially here in Salt Lake City, February. I had a little film release, uh, a, charity, a charity fundraiser to raise money for the Forgiveness Project, uh, and really had a great time. A lot of positive uh, people that came and, and a few negatives. 
mm-hmm. due to my story that didn't want to come or had walked out, which was, you know, very upsetting. Oh, but really? Once, I keep rolling with it. Once they, found <laughs> out, once they found out what your story was, they were just repulsed by it and stood up and left? Yeah, I didn't notice, but uh, we have some guest speakers that, that worked in the film come and help me and, and speak about forgiveness. And mm-hmm. because of my sex offense, my computer sex offense, um, people uh, caught up and laughed. Wow. Uh, I don't know how many. I do know that um, our Weber State professor here, uh, Dr. Forrest Crawford, who was in the film, spoke, and he had called some friends and uh, found out that they did not want to come because of my offense. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it has been some criticism, but, um, you know, that's not going to stop me from making what I call, you know, transformative film. Sure. Um, help, you know, films that make a difference. Our slogan at my film company is transforming hearts and minds through film. So I really want to, you know, stick with that. Well, the whole point area. of the movie is not justifying what you did. By no means are you saying that what you did was right. In fact, you're trying to elicit, you know, you're trying to forgive yourself, you're trying to elicit forgiveness from people, and you're also showing that you're repentant for what you did, I think. Yeah, you know, in the film, um, I may have come across almost like a victim, and that wasn't my intention. I probably came across more mean and rude than I normally am. Maybe that, you know, as an editor, I almost made myself look worse. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, um, but, yeah, it's... Um, I, I took full responsibility. It, it was almost like coming out like I was, like, homosexual. Mm-hmm. You know, coming out with my crime to to the world and saying, this is what I've done, this is how I'm going to make it better, and, you know, can forgiveness be accomplished? Sure. Um, and, and, you know, and, that, and that's kind of what, what's happened the last uh, couple of years from the not to say that there's anything wrong with coming out of the closet, let's say, and admitting that you're homosexual. There's nothing wrong with that. So yours is slightly... Oh, no, not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's like coming out, but yours is coming out in a different way. It's something like a skeleton in your closet that yeah. you're finally just saying, okay, this is me. Accept me for the way I am. I did it. I'm sorry. I know I made a mistake. Let's move on or something like that. Or, or I'm showing you what I've learned having had been in that situation. Yes, exactly. Um, it is a relief. Yeah. And anybody that has, you know, has had to come out and tell someone about something they did or, if, you know, coming out of the closet as a homosexual or coming out, just doing something like that, they feel relief. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's, you know, a big weight off my shoulders. But then on the other hand, I have to face the rejection. In fact, you know, just last week I had a horrible week, some really rude comments on our social media about me. Mm-hmm. I basically just kind of closed down for a day or two. Um, but then I bounced back, and, I, you know, I understand people's fear, but, mm-hmm. you know, at the same time, I always always ask, let's find out about the backstory of somebody. Yeah. You know, why did this happen? Why can't this person forgive? You know, what, you know, learn about it. A lot of people don't want to take the time to learn, mm-hmm. and I think it's really based a lot on fear in our society, especially in America, um, about these types of issues. Well, I think they're um, also worried about the backslide. I mean, what if you go back to your old ways? What if you, you are the neighbor and you are the creepy guy next door? You know, sure. all of that. Oh, yeah, there's, there's, there's that worry. Uh, I, 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 not for me personally, but maybe for, for people that don't know me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't want to get into the statistics or anything, but, uh, you know, it's not really about the sex offense, but they have a very low rate of, of recidivism sure. rate, you know, going back. But, yeah, I mean, I, I have to deal with that every day. Um, you know, it, it takes time to rebuild trust with mm-hmm. people. Yes. And I'm in that very, very long process, and it will not end until I die. Yeah. Um, it is not something that's going to end next year or the next year after that. It's going to continue. Not with my family. Mm-hmm. My family's very supportive of, of my filmmaking, my career, my, my wife, Heather, and, and my stepkid, you know, but it's the people that don't know me that are very standoffish. Yeah, and I have to say, though, that I was at first attracted to your film not because of your backstory, but was because of the concept behind the film itself, the idea of forgiveness. You know, there are times where we just need to forgive. That's the whole thing about holding grudges. I think that makes people angry, and it just doesn't... My previous um, 
film was about peace. Be holding mm-hmm. grudges does not bring about peace. It just brings about more anger, more violence. I think it, it, it yeah. all feeds in together. And uh, like I, I was telling you earlier, I have a friend that apparently I have wronged, and I have no idea what I did. All I know is he stopped talking to me, and he won't apparently forgive because he won't even talk to me to tell me what I did. And all I can assume is he stopped talking to me because I did something. I hurt him. I upset him. I insulted him. I don't know what I did, but he won't even tell me what it is. And so this is a perfect example of how forgiveness can ruin a friendship. I mean, we've been friends for a very, very long time, and yet now we don't talk to each other because of something. I don't know what I did, but apparently he's not forgiving me. So, you know, this is why I thought forgiveness is something that we really need to think about. You know, is the wrong that was done really worth not forgiving at all? I mean, I think you brought up the fact that there are certain things that are, it's hard to get forgiveness from, like crimes of murder and what are the things you mentioned? What did you say? Yeah, at the Fetzer Institute, I did a survey a few years ago on love and forgiveness in American society. And uh, the people interviewed said the unforgivable instances the top one was murder, 41%. Mm-hmm. And then we go into abuse, sexual crimes, 26%. I'm very surprised that that's not flip flop. Mm-hmm. Um, and then 60% say forgiveness is conditional on the offender feeling remorse. The, the, bottom, the bottom one is I'm confused by this. 4% only say terrorism. So I'm really just dumbfounded about those statistics. They can forgive um, terrorism? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> just, it seems very odd to me. But but then on the other hand, um, what's interesting is 62% of Americans agree that we need more forgiveness in their, in their own lives. Mm-hmm. But it's conditional. And which, you know, I think it's important if the person you're forgiving feels remorse. Yes. Uh, feels, you know, sorry for what he or she did. Um, but... You know, on the other hand, like you, with you and your friend, it's something that you may never know what you did. He may never tell you, and it's something that you need to do on your end. Just kind of let it go. It's hard. It takes time. Maybe you and your friend will talk about it. Maybe you won't. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah, it's a difficult road, and that's why it's called the forgiveness journey. It's not, you know, forgive it, forgiveness now or forgiveness tomorrow. It, it, it takes time. Sure. There, there is a woman in the film by the name of Lily who is here in Utah. She does sign her forgiveness, and she advocates in kind of an instant forgiveness. And that may be good for some people. Um, can you instantly forgive a murder? I highly doubt it. But she advocates, you know, forgiveness right then and there, probably most likely for smaller offenses or smaller situations. And she's a wonderful woman. Mm-hmm. I, you know... She found out about my crime. I did not know it when I was interviewing her because I don't bring it out to everybody. Mm-hmm. At the end of the film, she surprised me, the end of the, the shooting day, I mean, and she said, I know what you did and I forgive you. And I don't agree with what you did, but she gave me a big hug, and that was not scripted or anything. Sure. So it was a very powerful moment. I guess while we're talking about one of your interviews, how did you pick the people that you featured in the film? How did I meet them? How did you pick them? How did I take them? Yeah. Well, I did a lot of research. Um, you know, I, I looked up people, different stories. I uh, basically just a lot of research, random. I found a woman in Portland by the name of Vicky, and also another story, Karen. Um, they were both abused, met with them, talked to them, went there, interviewed them. And then uh, the people locally, I did not know anybody before this film. I researched locally, found stories on forgiveness, found events on forgiveness, and I just compiled people and I called them. I called therapists. I called, you know, religious leaders, uh, which is the first portion of the film. We cover kind of religious, spiritual views Mm -hmm. on the process of forgiveness. Um, So it was just random people that I had met, and and I'm still in contact with most of those people. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, the one that that I thought about was the the man who I guess tried to commit suicide and end up surviving it. And so, yeah. is he trying to forgive himself for doing what he did, 
or is he forgiving his father for being sort of like the genetic reason why he turned he tried to kill himself? Well, the impression that I got from Arnold um, is that he was trying to forgive himself, and that his family is trying to forgive him for trying to kill so again, himself. They're, yeah, for trying to kill himself. But I think it was more of forgiving himself, which is a lot more difficult in most people's minds than forgiving others. It's true. He is an amazing man. In fact, I'm going to be seeing him at the, uh, we're speaking at the uh, World's Religions um, Conference in Salt Lake uh, next month. And he has gone through so many, so many trials. He's blind from trying to kill himself with a gun underneath his jaw. Right. He's disfigured. Um, and I think that his story is going to be, is the most memorable, in my opinion, out of, out of the entire film. He's a public speaker. He's mm -hmm. a singer. He's turned a horrible situation like myself and many others into a very positive thing. You, you have to go down. You have to fall completely down into the dark until you can come back up, is my opinion. Yeah, for him, I mean, as depressed as he was when he was a teenager or whenever he did that, just think about it. So he was depressed, but he was still very, very functional, very, very healthy. And after yeah. the, the failed suicide, like you say, he's blind, he's disfigured, he is so much worse off than he was then, yet now he is a happier person. I think is, I think he's come to forgive himself and maybe just acknowledge what he is and the fact that he's happy that he's still alive? Yeah, I think from talking with him, I think he's pretty much gone through the forgiveness process with himself. Yeah. I can't speak for his family, but for him, you know, it's been since the 80s, so, you know, a couple decades since um, that's happened, and it's been a long journey. I, I remember he was addicted to painkillers, you know, and, and overcame that. And, he, you know, I, I've been to, to some of his public speaking events. Um, he's an inspirational speaker. And he's, he really inspired me because things could be a lot worse than what I have. Mm -hmm. I, I try to remember that. I have bad days. I have where I'm crying about the, um, the judgmental people that, you know, are, that I'm facing with my story. And the criticism, but I somehow come, get, you know, pull it together. I could have not done films. I could have, you know, dealt with my offense and my sex offender registration and, you know, stay in my house and hide. And sometimes I do want to do that. But I, I feel like that I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody that I'm, I'm, I'm a great person. I just, when I was in prison, I felt so much compassion for people. And that really, you know, it really came to light for some reason. It just kind of bloomed. And I've taken that and i have like, I need, I need, I don't want, I feel like I need to do it. And I want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Help others through, through film. Well, what I thought was interesting is the way you started out the film. You interviewed different uh, religious leaders about the way their faith looks at forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And everybody believes, yes, you do something wrong, you forgive. What I thought was really interesting was the Hindu way of looking things. There's no such thing as forgiveness. I think if you do something wrong, it's up to you to live with it, to make it right, and everybody just sort of says, well, that's your own doing. You did something wrong. You figure out how to fix that. Is that what, I, is that the ta is that what she, she said, or was I just sort of <laughs> hallucinating because it was uh, late at night when I was watching it? portion? The religious portion, when you were talking, the Hindu way of looking at forgiveness. I don't know if I recall that specific moment, but with the interviews, uh, you're probably right. I, I actually haven't watched my film in a while. So, um, but yeah, we, we interviewed a handful of uh, spiritual leaders, and it was all very similar. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, forgiveness is really for the person forgiving. It's, it's and, and people say, you know, I will never forget what that person did. Right. I'll never forget how that person wronged me. And that's okay. You're never going to forget it. We, we're not at, people are not asking for someone to forget it. It's just letting go, moving forward, releasing that anger um, from yourself, and not letting the person, the offender, I'll, I'll call that person, the offender, um, control you in a way where you have anger in your heart, in your yeah. mind. Yeah. 
that is a very difficult process, and I'm not through it yet. I don't know when I'll be through it. Mm-hmm. And um, a lot of people in the film, the stories of the, of the people that I featured aren't fully through it. Yeah. But they've learned to accept it. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I think basically it's showing that forgiveness is a hard thing, especially when, you know, the degree of whatever the crime was or the wrongdoing. Sure. Yeah, Yeah. and and sometimes it may never happen, but the whole point is sometimes we should work at trying to forgive just because it gets in the way of um, friendship. So anyway, um, so when uh, is this film screening at the Awareness Festival? Uh, It's it's being shown Saturday, September 19th at 2 o'clock. Okay, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on the Saturday. And Mm -hmm. that's at the L.A. Live Regal Cinema, correct? That's right. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So um, is there going to be any kind of discussion or Q&A involved with the film? You know, at this point, no. Um, I, I really want to try to make it. Um, I don't know if I can yet. Okay. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a broke filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Getting from Salt Lake City to L.A., I would love to go to L.A. I'm from oh. California, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm going to try. But at this point, unfortunately, there will not be a Q&A unless I can, uh, you know, find find a few hundred dollars in my backyard. You know, it's, it's, it's really funny. I find that on my show, I interview a lot of book authors, uh, filmmakers, musicians, and yoga teachers, and all of you guys are broke. It's like nobody has any money. So we're always talking yeah. about crowdfunding. We're always talking about, you know, trying to help each other out and, you know, share what we know because we just don't have the money to just drop and buy things that we need. Yeah, I've tried, I've tried crowdfunding, you know, Kickstarter, Indie, Indiegogo, all that stuff, and unfortunately it's, it's failed. I don't, I don't have, you know, the time really to get in there and spread it around mm-hmm. and, and, and promote it with money. But, you know, I, it's very, my films are low budget. You know, I shoot it most of myself. Um, but I think, you know, it still comes out really good, and it's a message that I really try to focus on. On my film. Mm-hmm. So if people want to find out more about the, your film, assuming that they can't make it to the festival, do you have a website? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's metamora, M-E-P-A-M-O-R-A, films.org, mm-hmm. metamorafilms.org. Metamorafilms.org. Now, can you view that one for free? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, we have it free on YouTube. So okay. if you just search the Forgiveness Journey film or something like that, you will come up. Mm-hmm. So it's free. I just want to get the message out. I'm not, you know, it's not about the money or anything, obviously. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it is available. There you go. Maybe this is your form of repentance, too, putting it out there. I think I think so. I think so. It's a very, very emotional project. It did wipe me out, but I, I think it's uh, the best thing I could have done. Well, I want to thank you for putting it out there because it needed to be said. Well, thank you. I appreciate, you know, Sky, um filming or showing the film at the, uh, at the uh, festival, and I, I really appreciate it. You know, I'm hoping people down there will be able to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, tickets are still available, and you can also buy at the venue. I think you can buy, like, one film at a time, or you can buy a whole day. There are different price plans. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And one more time, how do you pronounce your last name? Do Hamill. Do Hamill. There you go. Thanks I'm so not much. related to Josh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You never Which know. You never know. <laughs> well, thanks, Matt. Thank you. I'll talk to you All soon. Right. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. So that was Matt Duhamel, filmmaker behind the film The Forgiveness Journey.